Well, I'm actually the uh, first FRA administrator that actually comes out of the ranks. I'm a fifth generation rank and file rail worker. You know, I worked out there for 20 years and then uh, served as the uh, legislative director for the uh, United Transportation Union uh, back home in Illinois and represented uh, rail workers on rail safety issues for about 14 years, um, but concurrently spent about uh, 20 years in municipal government in my hometown of uh, Riverdale, Illinois. So, you know, kind of have a somewhat unique mix of uh, government experience, uh, rail safety experience, and uh, practical uh, you know, rank and file rail worker uh, experience. Well, you know, it's funny, I, uh, I didn't intend to be a railroader when I was growing up, even though my father was a 40-year uh, switchman on the Illinois Central. Uh, you know, I didn't intend to be a rail worker. I thought I was going to go into television production, actually. Uh, but, you know, I got out of high school and Dad asked me if I wanted to hire out on the railroad for one summer to make a little money for college, and I thought that sounded good. and. Uh, hired out and you know it gets in the blood fell in love with the work and uh, never left the uh, the industry instead put myself through college part-time took more than a decade but ended up with my uh, degree in labor relations the biggest thing is uh, you know for rail to achieve what I believe is its rightful place uh, is part of a balanced transportation network for too long rail and again this is whether we're talking freight rail mm -hmm. or passenger rail uh, it's been the forgotten mode and in many cases, in many markets, under many circumstances, it's actually the most efficient mode. And so uh, it's, it's, it's helping rail fit into that niche. Uh, so we get to the point where uh, goods or people are moving, uh, you know, efficiently, mm -hmm. using the particular, mo particular mode that's most efficient for a particular part of a journey and ensuring that you can seamlessly flow from one mode to the other. If we're hauling people, we need to understand how passenger rail links with airports, with transit systems. Uh, you know, if you're hauling freight, we need to understand how, uh, how rail links up with ports and uh, with highways, uh, you know, with trucking, uh, with aviation. Um, so again, it's about seamlessly moving goods and people using the mode that's most efficient for a particular part of a journey. I think the American people are actually far ahead of uh, a lot of the policy leaders. I think the American people have gotten this for a long time. You know, they're the ones that have been suffering out there each day with, you know, uh, uh, the congestion and the frustration of trying to drive on America's highways. And, uh, you know, the more freight that shifted from, uh, from truck to rail uh, opens up tremendous capacity on uh, the highways. Uh, you know, so people are, are, are looking to reduce congestion. Uh, they're looking for more convenient ways to move themselves. Uh, so, no, they're ahead of the policy leaders, and I think have been for a long time. Uh, the National Rail Plan will be completed on time by the end of this summer. And, of course, a key part of that will be the guidance that we give to the states for the creation of their own state rail plans. And that's really where, uh, you know, where, where the rubber meets the road, or in this case, perhaps where the steel wheel uh, meets the rail. Uh, you know, it's the states that ultimately execute uh, transportation projects. Uh, we've ensured that it's a multimodal approach, that we've engaged the Federal Transit Administration, Highway Administration, Maritime, uh, FAA, again, to make sure that it's not done in a vacuum, but that we uh, clearly articulate how rail is going to integrate well with these other modes. The most important thing that we need to do today is to create the market. And if you don't have a consistent market, uh, you're not going to have, uh, you know, a business owner choose to make the investment of plant and equipment. And uh, ultimately, it's that ridership that uh, uh, is the, uh, the measure of success. And so we, if we continue to build the ridership, grow the ridership, get these first lines up and running, ensure they're successful, and, uh, and build out from there. But it's going to be a decades-long build-out. So there's going to be jobs created this year. We're committed to ensuring that uh, shovels are in the ground this construction season. Uh, that's going to be immediate job growth. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit like a train leaving the station, where it starts out a little bit slower, but continues to, uh, to pick up momentum until everything's running at full speed.